Hello, I'm David Daniel Jr. Today I'm going to discuss to you about pest management. Last quarter we have taken up topics about seedling production, the planting and transplanting of rice. We have also lesson and topics about nutrient management and the last is about water management this quarter we will going to learn and study about pest management so in your screen you can read the what is the lesson all about what will we learn the pre-test the what will you know what to process and what to reflect and understand what to transfer and the post test and the definition of terms so by scanning this video I'll be going to show you some, some of the parts of this learning material that you can see and explore but uh, we will go directly to our topic today about weeds so weeds are considered pests in our farmland because pests is something that will affect the growth and development of rice uh, weeds compete with the rice in absorbing the nutrients and other minerals that can be found applied in our in the soil planted with rice now we are here so this is a picture of a good rice field uh, one is a man examining his, his rice farm and another is a man an, the same man spraying uh, his rice field to protect it from pests uh, namely uh, like uh, weeds or insects or viral fungal bacterial uh, those are the possible pests that can be controlled using a sprayer knapsack our first lesson is weeds so weeds are plants that grow in place where they are not wanted so when weeds g are grown in the rice farm they should be removed they should be eradicated because weeds reduces rice yields by competing with rice plants for sunlight and not only for sunlight the moisture uh, in, in the field the space and the soil nutrients that is much needed by rice in growing and producing harvest they also serve as alternative host or uh, place where insects are uh, covering or living uh, they are more serious in upland and direct seeded with land with than in transplanted irrigated rice paddies. So in upland, uh, the rice there are only irrigated during rainy season and when rain comes it's, it is the time that it is irrigated. And uh, in direct seeded wetland, the rice there are uh, near near and they are crowded not unlike in transplanted irrigated rice paddies they are in appropriate distance uh, ha had enough space for them to grow and produce more tillers so that they will also have more panicle no, when they will going to bear uh, 
seeds or what they call this uh, rice. Now, uh, the types of weeds commonly found in rice fields are grasses, number one. These are monocotyledonous plants which have long, narrow leaves, usually flat leaves with parallel veins round hollow stem. Now, uh, the ABCDE that you can see in your screen are the examples of grasses. I will not uh, pronounce them in their scientific name. I will, uh, I will only read them in Ilocano, Tagalog, and English uh, because uh, in scientific name, I'm not good in pronouncing those names. And the common name in Ilocano, Bakbaka or Galot Galot, uh, these are summer winds uh, that can be found in dry uh, area of field. Uh, kawad kawad in Tagalog, Bermuda grass or runners. Okay, Bermuda grass are you know, uh, very common uh, among, among you because Bermuda grass are planted in our garden in front of our house this serves as uh, or, uh, this serves this this sometimes plant with our ornamental plants flowering plants in front of our house because uh, the, the color of bermuda grass is much appreciated the next uh, letter b uh, example of grasses we have this marapagay. Marapagay look like pagay. Uh, that's why sometimes if you are not good in uh, distinguish, if you are not good in, you know, looking uh, this grass, uh, sometimes you you will be uh, mistaken that this uh, grass is uh, rice, but it's not. E, if, if it will be bear uh, flower, there you can see that it is not the rice, but it's, it is grasses. Anad, uh, the another name of marapaga is the bayakibok in Tagalog, barnyard grass in English, and lagton in Bicol. Uh, another example of grasses is the dukayang or bulang. No? The picture is below. Uh, you can see later on pulang puit in Tagalog or jungle rice in English another example is the karunsi or plastic grass na? Uh, plastic grass sometimes hard to eradicate or remove so the, pic the picture uh, uh, below as you can see is the picture of dukayang and this is not dukayang uh, I don't know but in Ilocano, in our place, we call it Dukayang mm, because uh, the, the formation of uh, grass is, uh, is spreading the branches, so it's duk Dukayang. Then we go on sieges. No? These are weeds with triangular stem, long narrow leaves, and modified rhizomes for storage. No? By the way, uh, sieges have uh, six examples. The uh, letter A examples is the gumi in Pangasinan. Uh, in Ilocano, we call this sirau sirau, ubud ubud taulad no? in Tagalog, and sirisibuyas in Bicol. Uh, letter B, in, in, uh, another example of sieges is the payong payong or umbrella seed. No? Then letter C, another example of sieges is the bawang bawang or marilanggo, marabawang or buslig in Locano, and apulid in Tagalog, and bulras in English. Letter D, uh, uh, we have the marabotones, balayang in Locano, and payong payong taga taga in Tagalog. Another letter E, we have the barsanga. Uh, barsanga uh, can be seen anywhere. They are 
the grass that grows almost any, uh, anywhere. Sometimes they uh, even uh, in in between concretes, no, they they are, they grow. Uh, next, we have bilid bilid or in Lucano or giant bulrus in English. They call it tikiu in Tagalog. Now here, so below, uh, following is the example of the uh, sieges grass. Now the uh, the next we have the broad leaves. No, the uh, broad leaves is different from sieges and grasses. The broad leaves have broad. Uh, and wide leaves, while the sieges has narrow and pointed leaves. Broad leaves are dicotyledonous plant with netted vines leaves. No? Uh, among the most common in rice fields are letter A, we have the gabing owak o bigabigaan in Tagalog. We have also bilago tinulokano or upi upi in Bicol. And we have also another example of broad leaves is the balangag, ilnokano, kangkong in Tagalog, or swamp cabbage in English. Another example of broad leaves grass is the silicilian uh, in Tagalog and marasili in ilnokano. Uh, by the way, this kind of grass is look li uh, the, the, the leaves looks like sili. And next, letter D, another example of broad leaves uh, weeds is marakamote. Kamukamote, uh, kamukamote ha in Tagalog. No? If uh, you have uh, this guy, no? uh, marakamote can also be eaten. Uh, I, I tried eating that, that during, during my childhood and until now, if there is... Uh, the chance that I can encounter much of this marakamote. Uh, uh, it's so nice eating this one. Uh, next week, we, we go to the methods of weed control. Uh, there are so, uh, so many, uh, there are a lot of methods that we can use to control weeds. No? By the way, weeds can, uh, can be controlled earlier so that uh, can, can be controlled earlier so that they will not compete or they will not consume the nutrients uh, fertilizer that you have applied or you will be applying in the field so that the uh, the target to be to grown up in bare uh, uh, bare flower and spikelets will uh, will do it no? but if you cannot remove the weeds the earlier possible time uh, they will uh, eat or consume mm, the uh, fertilizer that you will apply uh, and much fertilizer will be needed so that the the growth of uh, rice will be sustained and it will have more tillers and uh, produce more fruits or flowers. Now, now we have here uh, physical and mechanical method of controlling weeds. No? Mechanical and physical method can be done by hand pulling. Hand pulling, uh, holding the weeds and pulling it up so that they will be removed. Uh, in between or uh, in, in the land where rice is planted. Next, we have use of mechanical weeders. And straight planting uh, using uh, uh, mechanical weeders is very common or rot rotary weeder. But in, in our place, in villages or in our community, I haven't seen farmers who, who are using these mechanical weeders. But uh, to, my, to my knowledge, uh, based on my research and 
some interview mechanical weeders or rattanery weeders are being used in Nueva Vizcaya uh, farmers there are using this street planting method so in a street planting method is it, it it is appropriate for them to use mechanical weeder now uh, another uh, mechanical method is the efficient use of irrigation no, water which prevent the uh, uh, the emergence of all kinds of weeds uh, uh, but this can this can be done by controlling the applied water in the farm land where rice is planted we go to the next kind of controlling weeds the cultural method this involves good land preparation and flooding during land preparation to remove weed seeds no? Uh, this means that before we plant the seedlings of palay in our farmland, uh, in planting preparation, we should put more water than the, wa the water flowing is continuous for 24 to 36 hours while we are preparing the land, uh, mixing the so uh, mixing the soil with the uh, grass na, so that it will be it, it will be consumed or uh, uh, it, it turn into fertilizer so the the seeds that will float no must be uh, uh, the seeds uh, when the seeds will flow float in the in the water the the water in the rice field must be drained so that the seeds will be removed from from the from the farmland no? no so that that's one way on how to reduce the population of weeds in our farmland closer uh, crop spacing some uses 25 centimeter 20 centimeter but as we can see using closer is crop spacing uh, will reduce the population or the growing of these unwanted weeds and use of varieties that are taller and will produce more tillers now so taller rice is uh, much ne needed and recommended so that weeds cannot uh, compete in growing uh, and rice that will produce more tillers earlier is much needed another uh, method of controlling or removing weeds is chemical control this is the use of herbicides hmm, that may be uh, that may, can be used to kill uh, paralyze weeds so that they will stop growing or they will die and turn into fertilizer as they are as, as they will be decayed in plant in in, in uh, under the under the uh, rice or the, uh, the they will they will die by spraying uh, herbicides chemical control is cheaper than hand weeding in hand weeding you need more uh, person to to do it for example in a, a hectare plan you need a minimum of 20 so that you, you will finish the work in a day depending on the population or the uh, the thickness of weed that uh, must be pulled in the the farmland where rice is uh, planted uh, chemical controls is cheaper than hand weeding and can be used in all rice environments however the continued use of same herbicides leads to build up of perennial weeds which are difficult to control with herbicide so there are also what we call uh, disadvantages in using same kind of herbicides so it is recommended that uh, we use different kinds of herbicide as we use different varieties 
in planting uh, our rice farm. Uh, it says here that this can, be pre this can be prevented by hand or mechanical weeding periodically. Herbicides are applied either pre-emergence before weeds germinate uh, pre, uh, be, uh, pre examples of pre-emergence are the machete or the post-emergence after weeds have germinate examples of post-emergence are the advanced the one side the clincher the and others or in, in granular or sprayable form those are the kind of herbicides that can be used to remove or kill weeds in our uh, farmland Pre-emergence application of granular or sprayable herbicides controls most annual seeds, uh, annual, annual weeds, uh, excuse me. This is applied 3 to 5 days in a water dip or 3 to 5 centimeters, uh, a water dip of 3 to 5 centimeters. Post-emergence herbicide control annual broadleaf weeds and seeds is applied 20 to 25, DET means days after transplant drain water from the paddy before spraying replant or uh, put water uh, in the field the following day after spraying to a dip of 5 to 7 centimeter to, su to suppress late germinating weeds so if there are other weeds that ha are not yet germinate or grown it is uh, applicable to put water again so that uh, those weeds that are, had not been sprayed with herbicides will not grow or will not germinate. In spraying herbicides, always follow the recommended rate of application. Do not overdose or underdose the recommended rate in the level of the bottle where uh, herbicides has been uh, has been uh, sealed or put. So we have also preventive method. Before sowing the seeds, make use of big container in, uh, in soaking to allow the weed seed to float and discard. So uh, we can use drum, ha uh, uh, ha drum to remove the the, the seeds of weeds of course the uh, some of the uh, rice seeds will float uh, together with the uh, weed seed no? all those that float must be discarded or removed from the drum and the left will be uh, the seeds that we that will be used to uh, have uh, the uh, that will be used to to, pre to prepare a seedlings to be transplanted so here are pointers for effective herbicide application so number one apply herbicides at the right time so uh, using herbicides uh, in in not proper time is just waste of time and money waste of time and money because you cannot kill you cannot uh, remove those uh, weeds that uh, that already uh, out of the the states where the herbicides is capable of wiping or capable of killing it for example if in the level of herbicide uh, says there that uh, you must apply this herbicide at two to three leaf states and the, your uh, your rice farm has weeds which has a seven to uh, or five to seven leaf states now means that you are already late in applying that kind of herbicide which you have so you must uh, purchase or have a, a herbicide that is applicable or can be used in the uh, weeds stage where weeds that the weeds that 
has uh, that have been uh, uh, that are in your rice field are uh, uh, like the states where uh, that like they states that the herbicide can eradicate or kill. Now, so we have two kinds of herbicide available in the market. We have the pre-emergence and the post-emergence herbicide. The pre-emergence herbicide are the herbicide that can be applied, sprayed in the farm uh, before the weeds will be growing or uh, growing or uh, germinating no? and post emergence herbicides are herbicide that can be sprayed or apply applied when the gray the grass uh, have two to three leaf stages or uh, higher in number of leaf no? so use the right dosage of chemicals weak or strong dosage of chemicals may not be useful to the plant therefore follow recommended uh, dosage spray during fair weather do not spray when the wind is strong nor during rainy season because uh, uh, if you will spray during uh, rainy season or uh, you spray as uh, as it rain no? the uh, the mixture of herbicide that will be sprayed in the rice rice will be wiped out by rain and if it is strong winds no uh, of course the, the mist the mist that will be blown by the strong winds and it will not be applied or it will not touch the leaf of the grass uh, where uh, those grass is your target to be eradicated so distribute spray solution accurately no? do not just spray and spray without sure, uh, making it sure that the, the mist of the herbicide uh, must touch your or, or must, must reach the leaves of your weeds now uh, we come to the preparing of herbicide herbicides preparing of herbicides to be sprayed in in the rice field uh, to your target uh, grass grasses no? so before spraying herbicide be sure that you know what kind of grass states of grass to be eradicated uh, you must is uh, you must uh, determine whether the grass is grasses Sieges or the broadleaf. Uh, some herbicides cannot. Uh, some, some some herbicides are selective. Some herbicides are uh, broad spectrum, but herbicides uh, that are selective are better compared to the broad spectrum herbicides. Now. There are many herbicides available in the market. Herbicides are either post-emergence or pre-emergence. Pre-emergence uh, spray the herbicide before the uh, the the growing before the growing of uh, the grass. And post-emergence herbicides is a herbicide that can be sprayed after the after grow, after growing or the seed germi the seed germination of weeds now uh, we come t we come to the uh, ways or the how to prepare the herbicide number one oh by the way uh, it says that if you mix them properly, your herbicide will work effectively. If any common container is used in preparation, label it properly and keep it away from children. By the way, herbicides, insecticides, and other chemicals are uh, dangerous to our health. So if we use this herbicide, uh, insecticide and other chemicals 
uh, used to eradicate cider weeds or insects we must wear protective uh, ga- pr- protective uh, things like uh, in our hand we must use gloves we must use masks for our face and uh, nose we must uh, use jackets or uh, kapote uh, and plastic pants so that uh, our clothing will not be wetted by the mixture of herbicides and water while we spray uh, precautionary measures should be should be applied so that the danger of our health is not in uh, we, we, uh, or our health will not will not be in danger uh, so always uh, see to it that before using this dangerous chemicals uh, we must use protective uh, clothes protective tools and other that will protect our body so we, we must prepare the required amount of herbicide remember that too much herbicide may injure the crop and too little herbicide may not control weeds effectively so it must be exact so number the, the number two pour one part of the required water into the, into the container uh, the sprayer until uh, one fourth if, if this is one hole and we will divide it to uh, four parts to make to have the one part so if this is the half part then here is the uh, uh, the one part so fill this sprayer until here the water until here then uh, your container should contain more than what the sprayer tank can contain no so uh, never apply the herbicide ahead of the water because the wettable powder tends to float and may emulsify concentrate are concentrates are acidic okay uh, never put the water or the herbicides ahead by the water always put or pour the water ahead of the herbicide number three add the herbicide to the water if you are using wettable powder thoroughly mix it with a small amount of water before pouring into the container or you put the wettable or the powder into the into the, a small bottle then put a little water then mix it before pouring it to the container to be used in spraying the number four mix the herbicide with what in 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 the water container using a bamboo stirrer not your hand so if this is the opening of our sprayer container you can uh, remove the the cap remove the strainer and uh, put a clean bamboo stick inside to steer the mixture of herbicide in water inside the sprayer so uh, our lesson is uh, until here uh, uh, after this uh, after this lesson we have uh, a little quiz following and uh, i hope that everybody will uh, that you will participate in answering to test your knowledge and to test uh, whether you have gained something from what we have learned a while ago so next we will be tackling about the uh, the uh, insect pests that can be found in our rice field so uh, thank you for listening uh, I hope that you will continue to watch the video to be published uh, uh, by your by your strolly no? uh, I I am publishing uh, some learning materials in my website it is uh, if you type it in the uh, the in your search engine uh, just type 
DepEd K to 12, that is uh, noise space, small, all small letters, DepEd K to 12 dot blogspot dot com. You can comment there. You can see. Uh, you can uh, put comment about what you have read, what you have viewed, and, and uh, on how I can help you more in your learning. Thank you very much and I hope you learn as I learn in the lesson that I shared to you.